On today's episode, we break down the news, a lot of matchups, some really in-depth start-sit decisions to be made, the starts of the week, the conclusion of the Boom Boom Kicker. Make sure you stay tuned and subscribe right now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hi. It's title time. Oh, oh. oh man. Anxiety starts tonight. Yes. Welcome in. Hope you got DSTs tonight. <laughs> Thursday episode of the show, Championship Week. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Mike is not wrong. Anxiety permeates the air. And uh, this studio. <laughs> and You're not doing well. No, I'm I'm okay. I really no, am. No, 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 no. Is this no. one of those denial? Yeah, yeah, your friends could tell you you're not doing well. I have a decision to make. We all have a decision to make. Amari Cooper put up a record-setting AFC Player of the Week worthy 48-ish fantasy points, depending on your league scoring, with Joe Flacco last week. And unfortunately, we weren't dealt the cards of you know a juicy matchup the next week to just roll right into. Instead, we get a short week. Mm -hmm. A Thursday night game against the number one defense in terms of fantasy points given up to wide receivers and quarterbacks. No practices. Hasn't practiced due to a heel injury. If you if you watch if you watch the seventy yard touchdown he had, at the tail end of that play, Omari Cooper is limping. And clearly he is actually dealing with something, although they listed on the report. Yeah, that it was more rest, not, and, and it makes sense if you were. Well, he's resting an injury, right? It says not injury related, rest, heal, not so, H E A L H E E L as in his heel. So fantasy players, look, you don't get points for loyalty. Let me tell you where I'm at. You okay. tell me. You, right. you tell me. I mean, <laughs> whether I'm here in, in an hour, we'll see. You won't be. But where I'm at right now is that. I am probably benching Amari Cooper tonight. Uh, with the news that it, there, there was a, a news blurb this morning, and uh, do we have it here? Can we get the, the full tweet the from Tom Pelissero, please? Yeah, I'll try and pull it up. Uh, he hasn't practiced. It's it's sort of a game time decision. It says he's hopeful to play tonight against the Jets, but his status remains up in the air. The short week is tough. Cooper knows his body well. They'll get a better sense close to kickoff. I appreciate that line. That he knows his body yeah. well. Yeah. Better than anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like most players, not in tune. Have yeah. no idea what's going on with That's their body. That's my knee? But, yeah. but Amari Cooper, he knows his body. Yeah. But, it, it's but, really interesting to me the report that he's struggling, hoping to play, knows his body. Like that makes it clear that this is an injury. But their actual official, like I, I pulled it up right before the show just to make sure. That on theirs, they say not injury related. How can you how can you have these two conflicting things? Like, and it makes a difference to me. Like, if I knew they were just giving him rest, that is far, far better to me in a tough matchup where you, you could still have him get 13, 14 targets in this game, uh, difficult targets, good cornerback. Or if he's actually struggling with his health, and then you go, okay. Is he going to be a little bit more limited injury risk in addition to the difficult matchup? That that's like a a tiebreaker for me. Yeah, and the, and the reason that I'm going to likely make the decision to bench Amari Cooper this evening is because the potential outcomes for Amari Cooper this evening, I think, I think, can be replicated by other players, and the potential negative outcomes for Amari Cooper this evening are significant if he has a re injury or he cannot play, you're devastated on Thursday. If he's shut down by a team that shuts down the passing game, I mean, they give up. How many yards did Amari Cooper have last week? 
265, I think. Okay, they give up 168 on average to the opposing offense or, or to the opposing passing offense. And, okay, so Amari Cooper toughs it out. Is that 10 points? My goodness, the Jets, the Jets passing defense against wide receivers. It's brutal. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not average. It's not above average. I mean, we know it's number one. So you say, oh, it's the best. But sometimes that, that's different, right? Sometimes the, the number one wide receiver in fantasy at the end of the year barely scored more than the second place. And sometimes it's Cooper Cup from, you know, two or three years ago where he laps the field. That's what the Jets are doing. And I'm, I was like, well, what about recently? You know, now that they, they haven't had Zach Wilson and maybe they're, they're giving up short fields or whatever. And my goodness, this last week against the Manders, 18 points below their expectation. The week prior, 10 points below expectation to a good Dolphins. The week prior, 28 go, go points to, below. It's just Go like, to points given up and read them. That's more, I think that's easier to process. Uh, so just yep, if you just sure. switch it because they're they're the best in that too. It's just okay. So last week to the Washington Manders, they gave up eleven total fantasy points to all their wide receivers, the entire wide receiver room. The week prior against Miami, twenty eight point nine. Now that's yeah, it's Miami. It's that's Tyreek. Great. Sure, I mean that was still double digits below what their wide receivers usually average. The week prior, Houston five. The week prior, Atlanta one. Um. They gave up 36 to Miami again, but, uh, you know, pretty much this is – there's only been three games on the course of the entire season where they have given up a chunk of – like, call it 25 fantasy points to that wide receiver room, and those games are twice against Miami and once against Buffalo. Yeah, they, they've they given up points. The defense has given up 28 to the Commanders, 30 against the Dolphins, 34 against the Dolphins, 32 against the Bills. Um they gave up six to Houston. Stroud got knocked out. That was the rain game where Wilson won it. And they've given up some points, but it's a tough call. And it's not bench Cooper no matter what. It's bench Cooper based on your options. I'll tell you my situation. I can bench Cooper and I can play Devin Singletary as a home favorite with C.J. Stroud against the Titans. That's an option I'm looking at. I could play DeAndre Hopkins if he gets Levis back. It's really difficult. And I know that everybody out there is going to have a different reaction because you have different options. So it's not a requirement to bench Amari Cooper. Kyle has poisonously chosen <laughs> to reveal that Amari Cooper last year against the Jets in week two, nine for 101 and a touchdown on 10 targets. But that was a long time ago. So I'm not saying this is a final decision. It's the way I'm leaning right now. And that's the best we got for you. Because the news reports, we did, I didn't expect Tom Pellicero to come out and talk about his heel. I had pretty much said, hey, I'll just ride him. Mm-hmm. But you know what? This week, this week's made for tilting. It certainly is. Now, where are you with the decision? I'm, I'm so, I'm at the bottom of the well. You guys are looking down at me. I, I, I lean at this point for your particular options. I think I would play them over Amari Cooper. Which yeah, is, I, I, I've been Amari Cooper this whole week, but the, I mean, this is you're getting a little weak in the knees now. Well, this is just a, this is a wrinkle to, and it's. Be okay with your process. Like you need to make peace. You did say this y you yesterday. Need, you have to make peace with this. Of like, I'm making this. If you're gonna start Amari Cooper or bench him, know the reasons you're doing it. And yeah, it'll be really, really frustrating if you end up with the incorrect decision. But know the reasons why you are making the decisions you are making. And it makes it a little easier. I think if you were to handicap the potential of a, of twenty plus fantasy points from Amari Cooper tonight, mm -hmm. that that would that, be so minuscule of a potential outcome. That's sub ten percent. So, and that's the only way that you're really, really happy. You could be okay with ten points, maybe. Yeah. So, and I'm also a team that has David Njoku and the Cleveland defense. So the idea of you know, it's a lot having a lot go down against that past even. I'm just I'm laying it out because it's the biggest decision fantasy players have for this evening. Uh, we've got all the matchups to get into today. We got the news and notes to talk about. That's just my last note on it because it, it's you know part of it is I think it makes in my process it makes benching Joe Flacco easier. Where. Oh, he's not going to be able to get it done without. Yeah, Amari. like if Amari Cooper is if Amari Cooper can't separate, if Amari Cooper has to take a bunch of plays off, yeah, Injoku he'll be fine. 
Like he, I think that I'm still playing him, but um, if it's Flacco or you know these other streaming options that we had brought up, I'm definitely moving over to them now. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. If I could see the future, it would be so much easier. Um, it would. Well, Russ can see his future, and it's hmm. not as a member of the Denver Broncos. Yeah, that, he has formally been benched for the remainder of the season, and they're expecting him to be cut. It escalated rapidly <laughs> from uh, we're considering doing this. <laughs> it was, I mean, minutes later. Uh, yeah, no, we actually we told Russ he's not going to play. Unlimited. The, the, the background going into it was, at least we're hearing, Russell Wilson's camp was told weeks ago, if you don't waive your injury protection against guaranteed money because the way it's working out, he... They just wanted it delayed pretty much. He has a physical coming up in March that should he not pass it, he it, it triggers a whole bunch more guaranteed money for him. And so the team was saying, no, we don't want this right here. If you don't like work with us and negotiate, either get rid of it or move it, whatever it is, then you're going to get benched. And we don't know when, but you will get benched. And here it is. You he, got benched. He chose not to play football. Yeah. If I mean, he was I, given that ultimatum. I don't necessarily blame him because he will still get a whole b- lot of money. Uh, and it, Russ will I, – I mean, Russ will find a team. Like, you're telling no, me – No doubt. No you tell, doubt. You tell no me doubt. the – if Russ the Wilson, Falcons. The, ex, that's where, exactly where I was going to go. If Russ hits the free market – the Atlanta Falcons should be drooling to go get Russell Wilson. Not that he's anywhere you close to – You think they to, should be? I think they should. Oh, man. Compared – I mean, Are compared to what me? they have. Drake and, London is the only person in the entire league praying for Russell Wilson right now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tough. Jared Stidham will take over. Remember last year he took over and was very relevant. I mean, against San Francisco. The Niners in his first game, he was uh, 365 and three. More importantly, seven carries both weeks on the ground. He'll he'll run. Uh, probably not someone you're starting this week, but super flex leagues. Uh, if you lost someone, I'd start him over Joe Flacco personally. Whew. <laughs> that's, I heard an audible woo yeah. from the producer Cause area because it's, it's spicy. <sighs> Isaiah Pacheco didn't practice with the concussion. Not a lot of optimism there. No. Jordan Addison didn't practice with the ankle. Cortland Sutton didn't practice with the concussion. Zay Flowers, oh, Mike, yeah, no, did not practice yeah. with a calf. It was an estimation as the team held a walkthrough. Ooh, but, I'll make another estimation but, right now. I estimate you will be tilting very soon yeah. if he doesn't practice again. Very much, because it's either I put Garrett <laughs> Wilson in tonight. Oh, no. oh, wow. Or I hold out for Zay Flowers. And Welcome. Then what, would your, what would your pivot be at that point? I... Like Dobbs, <laughs> Romeo Dobbs. Welcome to the pit of despair. <laughs> All are welcome. Uh, Keenan Allen did not practice. I mean, Keenan Allen is done for the year, I think. I would imagine. He should be. He really should be. The Chargers have no purpose in getting him injured. Yeah, I, I have him on our, my matchup against Mike, and I have no expectation of playing him because I just don't think he'll be back. Chris Rodriguez, commander's running back on injured reserve. Brian Robinson limited in practice. He, okay. He's, I'm okay. thinking he's back. But if not, then Antonio Gibson will receive all of the pain slash opportunity against San Francisco this week. And uh, Josh Palmer also didn't practice. So, it, you know, the Gerald Everett conversation yesterday, if there's no Keenan, no Josh Palmer. Yeah, he's in play. And, the matchup, and Eckler. The matchup is perfect for Everett as well. It's going to be Easton Stick versus Jarrett Stidham. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, baby. Great. Can't wait to break that one down, guys. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. We have a Saturday night special, the highest over-under of the week at 53. The Detroit Lions at 11-4 and four, taking on the 10-5 and five Dallas Cowboys. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas minus six. Can we finally have a 50-point game hit the over? I think we can. Only five have been in a dome this year, but 11 of 12 have not hit the over. This is the highest total since the beginning of October. 
Uh, very, very, very important game for both teams. And the Lions' defense has not been looking great. Dallas, I, 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 I do think we get the over here. I, I want pieces in this game. This is a championship week type of matchup that you're really hoping for. The only player that I feel scared about is Tony Pollard. Of the guys that like, yeah, you're probably going to play him, right? But Detroit is uh, good against the run, bad against the pass, and Pollard's had a lot of duds this year. Yeah, Pollard has been bad as a runner in games with much better matchups. I think Matthew Barry, I saw him talk about the fact Rico Dowdle has the same number of goal line touchdowns as Tony Pollard with 47 fewer opportunities in the red zone. So efficiency has been a problem. The defense for the Lions fourth against running backs over the last six weeks doesn't mean Pollard is a bench. I, I, I don't know if, I mean, Devin Singletary or Tony Pollard. Is that where we're at with Tony I, Pollard? I, I think that is where we're at, and I think that's a fair assertion. You look since the, the bye week, I mean, this is a long, this is the last nine games, he had three of those games where he hit eight fantasy points. And so this isn't like, well, at least he's got a floor. Maybe he doesn't get a touchdown in a tough matchup. His floor is very often around five fantasy points, and that's going to crush you in a championship Would you play matchup. Brees Hall tonight over Tony Pollard? I would. Would you play? I got uh, a nasty one. Okay. It's Saturday night, so we you may not have official word. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Yeah. Pacheco oh, is out. If Pacheco's out, I would rather have Clyde. Yeah. I was going to ask the Zamir White, Josh Jacobs side. That's who. <laughs> I'd rather have whoever. The Raiders the, running back? The, the Raiders starting running back that week. If you have both, then you can wait to find out. Some of those situations, though, I mean, let's be real. We won't know about Pacheco, I don't think. Yeah, it, by, by, if he don't, I mean, if Pacheco doesn't practice at all this week, by Saturday night, you can have a pretty strong conviction that he's not going to play. Yeah, we may have word at that point. Uh, home games for Dallas are beautiful. They're beautiful for Dallas. They are number one in points per game at home, 40. A game. 71 plays a game. Six of the last seven Detroit games have hit the over. So we're optimistic about this one, which means that, uh, you know, despite Dallas's defense, which has softened of late, Jared Goff is, is um, he's going to have a lot of opportunities in this one. Oh, man. Whether he can deliver yeah. in a big dome game. Uh, uh. It's, so it's really tough. Follow my logic here on on Goff and really on anybody playing against the Cowboys. It feels like you either – if you get down, then the pass rush and you can't run the ball just is really, really, really good against you. So the Lions' best chance to win this game is to really focus on running the ball. Which and, worked against Dallas with Buffalo a couple weeks ago. Exactly. So it, it almost feels like if you're down and you want to catch up, it's going to be hard and a bad game for Goff. But if the Lions are good, it's going to be a bad game for golf because it's going to come on the ground. I know Mike has a number of uh, uninspiring quarterback options for his dynasty matchup, and I know that he's trying to will Jared Goff to a good game. This it's the the play of Jared Goff. You are hoping that it, you're just that the touchdowns come. I'm not expecting like a 300 yard passing game for Jared Goff. You're hoping that it's 200. They get inside the five. Montgomery or Gibbs get stuffed, and then they do a play action rollout to Laporta. Like that, that's the path mm -hmm. that Jared Goff has a big game. Yeah, Laporta could because uh, they will they will score. Like the Lions, I think will put up a a decent amount of points. Where it's a right now a twenty three implied team total. So, I mean, the three touchdowns. You're you're hoping that two of them are passing. The fringe players. I mean, obviously, Ceedee Lamb, Dak. You're hoping for big games yeah. there. Jameer Gibbs is a lock. Amon Ra is a lock. The fringe options, Brandon Cooks, I am optimistic about him in this game. Yeah, it makes sense. I like him a lot. And, uh, you know, Laporta's back in. Ferguson, I think he's he's in your lineup. Yes, Ferguson's a, a play. Where, where are you with the David Montgomery progression? I guess that would be the last question. Are you just, uh, you know, he, he's been not what he was in the first half of the year, but he's still been a top 24 back. He's been great, and he was even great last week. He got a touchdown, but then was injured and, and, and left the game. Um, didn't play much. So still had 17 attempts. Really, it's to me, it's a matter of, you know, is, is he on the injury report right now? No, I don't believe he is. Not to my knowledge, no. Yeah, no, he's not on. So I'm totally 100% down playing David Montgomery. All right, the New England Patriots at 4-11 and take on the 9-6 and six Buffalo Bills in Buffalo, where Buffalo... 
Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo. <laughs> it's 13. They're 13 point favorites. The over under is 40 and a half, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. Buffalo's won three straight games. New England beat them in week seven, 29 25 at home. But I don't think they're going to beat them this week. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't huh? think so. Uh, pretty heavy favorites here. Josh Allen, uh, he's obviously in your lineup. He has had some success against New England in recent memory. James Cook, of course. Stephon Diggs is, is the big <laughs> mm -hmm. storyline from the final <laughs> week on trusting him. Cause it's so hard. Uh, this is a matchup. It's not fair. This is a match. The last four games against New England, Diggs has 14.8, 18, 18.7, and 19.9 fantasy points. He has been great for his entire tenure as a Buffalo Bill until the last two months. In the last two months, they changed coordinators. They run the ball more. There are fewer deep shot opportunities to Diggs, and this is a game where you would expect, obviously they lost last time, and the NFL's crazy, anything can happen, but you would expect process-wise that the Bills are winning this game, are running the ball, not needing to push England the ball down. Isn't New England very, field. very good against the run? They are, I think yes. In recent, they are, I they, think they in are recent, very, very good against the run. Much more beatable uh, with wide receivers. Number one in rush yards per game average. I mean, if you got to the championship it's and tough. you've still got digs on your in your lineup, you're playing digs. Let's yes, let's be honest. Yep. You know, you know who what it reminds I feel me like of. We said that for four weeks. We have, but we kind of said that about Mike Evans last year. And there were some people who got to championship week about okay. with Mike Evans. Okay, yeah. and all of a sudden he won everybody a championship because he had his three touchdown game because he's Mike Evans. Yeah. Diggs is great. You're playing Diggs. Okay, but you're not playing Kincaid. You're you're not playing no. Gabe Davis. No. So <laughs> don't. <laughs> Ramondre Stevenson was placed on IR. So this is guys. This is legit like Zeke and no one. That's what I think. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean Hunter Henry if he played, but it, you're coming no. off an injury. It's nerve wracking. Uh, you get. Maybe Juju back to mix with Parker and Demario Douglas. I'm. I think it's Zeke and no it's one on Zeke that team. Zeke and no one on that team. If you have to start Henry if he's active because you don't have another option, you could do worse. I mean, I play Gerald Everett over Henry though. I would as well. Uh, Ger Gerald Everett's a pretty good play this week. All right, quick break. Done with that matchup. Coming back with the Bears Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. Seven and eight. Chicago Bears six and nine. DraftKings Sportsbook line. Chicago minus three. Over under is 38. This game projects to be. Do we have the music for uh, Joyke Bell? Can we play that music? What the. The, the, the lumberer? I mean, that's what this the game. Plotter? That's what this game. All right. Oh, there we do. Is. Yeah. I mean, pace of play wise, Atlanta is going to want to run the football. Uh, Chicago, they did get good news that DJ Moore's not on the injury report after the turned ankle. It's so obviously not severe. Came back out on the field. You know, what are your expectations for fantasy contributors in this one for championship week? I am still fine playing Justin Fields. Um, this is, you know, the, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, they are not great against quarterbacks. The last six weeks have been good, but their matchups have also, you know, haven't been the scariest. Uh, to me, if I've got fields, I'm, you know, I'm playing them over golf. If I've got a golf fields decision. So it, he's probably in most lineups that are, that have him in championship week. Um, I'm really curious. You're going to have to track Cole Komet. He's been pretty solid this year, especially with Fields, um, but he didn't practice Wednesday, so that's just keep monitoring I don't think situation. I'd play him. Really? The, yeah, the I mean, I'd, I want to, but the risk is too high when you're a week off of getting knocked out of a game. Well, put it this way. Let's say both Hunter Henry and Cole Komet are active. If they're both active, it's Cole Komet. Yeah, okay, so he's... Yeah. Of, yeah. The injured, of the injured well, tight ends, yes. he wins the day. For okay, sure, Cole for Komet sure. is active or Gerald Everett. Well, what about you? What would you do, I would Mike? Go, I would what go. What would you do? <laughs> You'd go Cole Komet? I would go Cole Komet. Okay. Cole Komet's been really good. The last four weeks, top 12 every single week. No, he looked awesome last week. He had 100, he had 100 yards before halftime. Yeah. Yeah, he's been tight end 10, 12, 10, and 5 uh, the last month. Deonta Foreman is going to be back. Full practice on Wednesday. Khalil Herbert had the big game last week. Yeah, it really, Atlanta's a brutal rushing defense. I honestly, I'm going to sit all my Bears running. One hundred percent. I'm yeah, not. Foreman I'm not kind of 
muddies it. I, I, I presume that Foreman would go back to being the the primary grinder, but uh, but who knows with, after with, Khalil with, Herbert yeah, did with, what he did but last with week. the matchup and everything. It there's and, just uh, if you want to take a shot in DFS, great. But uh, in my championship, I'm not doing it. A lot of folks want to know what to expect from Bijan this week. Dallas has been the best defense on the ground in terms of yards per game. Dallas? I'm sorry, Chicago. Chicago but they've given up a lot of running back receiving yards. Bijan's in your lineup. Yeah, Bijan's in your yep. lineup. It's, are you chasing anything about what Algier has done? No. No, I don't I don't I don't want to do that in a championship game. Okay. And I can't trust Drake Lund, Drake Lund. I just can't. Yeah, I mean, like it, the last two weeks, Drake London hasn't just kind of hurt. You're probably not in the championship if you played him the last two weeks. Yeah, this this isn't a, a great matchup either. The Bears' defense has been pretty <laughs> solid all around m most of the season, and they've got stronger down the stretch. What about Pitts versus Komet? Because Pitts, the last two Heineke starts seven for 105 and a touchdown in those games. Or would you go to Cole Komet, knowing that the yardage is probably better there? I, I would go to Cole. I'd Komet. go Cole Komet. I mean, all right, like it was it was four targets. Last week, they hit, you know, he had a 24-yard reception, had the touchdown, but I'll take the volume. The the Raiders, Raiders, 7-8. and eight. They're on fire. Run, 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 run. Yeah. Taking on the Indianapolis Colts, 8-7. and seven. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Indy minus 3.5. The over-under is 43.5. Antonio Pierce is 5-3 and three since he took over. And... This game matters. I mean, for both teams, wild card, yeah, up for grabs. If they, if the Raiders win this game, they even up record wise with the Colts, and, and they have a shot to beat what Denver in the last week. Yeah, I mean, and then Raiders will have the tiebreaker over the Colts. Yeah, the the Colts are in right now, like the Colts are the seventh seed. It's an incredible. I mean, Shane Steichen's in the short list of coach of the year. Sure, for sure. Which, um, you know, just a great job. Aiden O'Connell, Josh Jacobs, Zemir White situation, Devontae Adams. Um, Man, what do you do with Adams? So, I mean, I, I don't think you can bench Devontae Adams in your title game under the, like a, under the same argument that Jason made for Stephon Diggs. Adams had a – I mean, he's coming off of an eight for one-on-one -on -one and a touchdown uh, two weeks ago. I think one of the big differences, though, is the quarterback and, and the, the, the style of play of the offense. This is a team that just won – throwing 63 yards now that's the outlier that's not going to happen yeah he's they thrown won, for they 248 won. yards on two different occasions Aiden O'Connell has so I, I would expect them to not throw the ball for only 60 something yards but when you look at the matchup against the Colts it really is exactly how the Raiders want to play they want to run the ball 30 40 times if they can and just keep grinding and not pass the ball and that's that's how you beat the Colts they're really susceptible on the ground and they haven't given up a ton uh, to wide receivers. So Devontae Adams, to me, is a he, – he's someone where you look at <laughs> – you look at your matchups. Andy is not happy because he has him in the, the – Cooper, Cooper or Adams, here's, Jason. Here's the good news. Amari Cooper tonight or Adams. Here's the good news for Adams. You had week 10 through 15 where he was averaging about 80 receiving yards a game. And then you had the, the incredible dud uh, – He's gonna get targeted a bunch. Yeah, let's let's uh let's hope that Michael Pittman plays. He, they're not favored, so the idea of them playing from ahead in, in the majority of this game, maybe not you know on the road is maybe not a realistic thing. Um, I, the I, five I, previous games he was on pace for you know seven touchdowns, fourteen hundred yards. He was yep, he was normal. I'm, I'm gonna play him. I think that you're right though to ask the question of Cooper or Adams. We've talked so much about Cooper that I think people know where we're at with him. He's not like a must bench, but he's a take a look at your other options. If you can flex another player like a Devin Singletary, I would. Remember when Andy tried to tell us he was okay? I would. <laughs> I would put. <laughs> yeah, the hoodie says otherwise right now. Because um, I didn't even have this as a possibility. To be dealing with Adams' decisions. Yeah, I think I'm Adams fine, is, by the way. Is, <laughs> I think Adams is right in line with Amari Cooper. Just to, like I would put, if I had both, I would put Adams in ahead of Cooper because he's not hurt, right? And he's not playing the Jets. Exactly. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, Josh Jacobs, Zamir White. Zamir White was the running back twelve and fifteen over the last two weeks. Josh Jacobs didn't practice on Wednesday due to the quad. You I would have liked to see an, a limited from him on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he tested it, 
during the game last week in warm ups. Before, before the be- game. Yeah. Yes, before the game. <laughs> um, and so that makes you think okay, if he was close enough to really consider playing, obviously he didn't, that he will play this week. But he didn't practice all last week. And so it shouldn't have shocked us that, that he, he was a- inactive. If he doesn't practice this week, they're going to say the same thing. Oh, he's going to warm up. He's going to test it out and see. Um, I do think it is worth trying to wait on this information. Like if you've got a, if you've got to uh, hold off on a Thursday night player so that you can figure out if you've got Zamir White. Like if you if you picked him up off of waivers, I would do that. I would look at a a later week pivot off of Zamir White if he's not starter because whoever is the starter here, if Jacobs plays, he's one hundred percent in my lineup. If Zamir White is the starter and Jacobs isn't playing, he's 100% in my lineup. It's a, such a good matchup. On the other side, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, you play him. Michael Pittman. So he my- is limited, trying to get back from the concussion. Yeah. If you missed it last week, Michael Pittman was progressing through the concussion protocol very rapidly, was uh, all but said. A little too rapidly. Mike, Michael Pittman's going to play. Like, it's... It's don't even worry about it. And then Sunday morning, the the reports came out that the concussion symptoms resurfaced for Michael Pittman, so he was ruled out. He did get a limited practice in on Wednesday. So that I mean that's the trend that you want to see. I mean, if Michael Pittman plays, I'm playing Michael Pittman, but it's a just monitor his practice reports. If Michael Pittman doesn't play, I I really have a I you know a little bit more difficult time seeing the Colts win this game. Uh, obviously, they can run the ball well with Jonathan Taylor. They got destroyed last week by Atlanta. Yeah, without that, Michael Pittman. I, I I think I think the Raiders are going to come in here and just completely control this game. Gardner cannot, I don't think, destroy without Pittman. I don't think he can move the ball well. Against I think that's defense. something to watch. I think you're right about yeah. that. If Michael Pittman is out, the Raiders DST. Even if Pittman plays, I think that the the Raiders are a good play but if Pittman is out this defense is just so fired up yeah and I I feel like fantasy players aren't paying enough attention to how well they are playing so uh, if you're struggling on your defensive options and you feel like there's nothing there go have a peek see if the Raiders are believe that they are number one in points per game since Antonio Pierce took over for the the DST the Raiders DST it might I mean, be in recent weeks. Dude. They're de- they're definitely number one in points per game over a handful. I mean, they had the monster game obviously against the Chargers, yeah. but but they are up there. Antonio Pierce is he's gonna get the job right. He is delightful. <laughs> like I I love Antonio Pierce. He is the he is the old school that I like. <laughs> right, right. I know what you're, oh, I know what you're saying. Oh, Usually, oh, you hate the old school. Yeah. This is like, no, we're gonna run the football. And, but it's like, no. But it's like they're like, we talked to Antonio Pierce, and he said to his locker room, "I want you to come out with hate in your heart and violence and just destroy the other team." You're like, whoa, man, <laughs> what are you doing? You're playing a sport, but this is serious business to Antonio Pierce. But you're, you to, in, but you're in. But you're in. Oh yeah. Visualize slitting their throats. <laughs> yeah, it's just like whoa, whoa, Pierce. What are you talking about? You know, on the, you know, it's win the football game. Yeah, it's a metaphor. But destroy yeah. them. <laughs> but kill our families. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 figuratively, Pierce on the field. Yeah. <laughs> they, they but put, yeah, give give that man the job. Castrate them. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, man, did you take a second to think about saying that? <laughs> yeah, I did. I know you did. I can feel the pause. And I made the right decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he, Here's the funny thing. If you ever wonder if coaching matters in football, you've got, what, 22 players on both sides of the ball? Mm-hmm. Same players. Different outcomes. Yep. And uh, are we done with Josh McDaniels? Can we just retire that son of a gun? <laughs> I mean, he won, he won in Denver while he was cheating. Uh huh. Because he was cheating for a little while in Denver. He won in, with the Patriots with Tom Brady and when they cheating. Were, when they were cheating, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you talk. And by the way, uh, just reflecting on the Chiefs' performance over the last few weeks, is that game on? Are we previewing that today, Brooksy? Probably not, right? Tomorrow, because that's the afternoon game. Um, but put a pin in this. Uh, the the Matt Nagy offense mm. situation. Like uh, how how real is that? The budget magician <laughs> strikes again. Yeah, and and by the way, with um. 
with Josh McDaniels that just reminded me of Matt Nagy. That's all I'm saying. All right, the Rams at 8-7 and seven, taking on the 5-10 and 10 New York Giants. The Rams. And this is a uh, shout-out to Restore the Roar over on Twitter who tweeted out, the Rams offense with Matthew Stafford, Kyron, Puka, and Cup on the field at the same time. Number one in EPA per play. Number one in dropback EPA. Number one in dropback success rate. Number one in success rate. Number one in rushing success rate. Number one in points per drive. Number one in yards per play. The, the, They're five and one in their last six games. The I, two teams to me that like I would love to see the Raiders play the Rams right now because they're both just playing so hard and on fire. And these are teams you don't want to run into right now. The Rams are playoff bound, and they've got a shot to to really upset someone. So going against the Giants, I don't think they're going to let off the gas. Uh, I expect them to. I mean, they're five and a half point favorites on the road. I think they cover that. I think they go in there and and really have their way. That's that's the way I see this game going. Kyron Williams missed four games. Kyron Williams is number two in the league in rushing. Like <laughs> what? This this is unbelievable. This offense is is getting right at the right time, and they are going to be a since scary team to face in the playoffs. Since Kyron is back from injury. Okay, how many rushing yards do you think he's on pace for through those five games? I mean, he's, seventeen. He's averaging like over a hundred a game. He was on pace, and this is just rushing yards. Two thousand forty-three <laughs> rushing yards <laughs> is the type of numbers he's put up over the last five games. My um, goodness! And that's adding just add in another sixty receptions for three hundred receiving yards. I would really rather have him this week against the Giants than, than I would Kamara? Alvin Kamara against Tampa Bay. Let me oh. just whoops say, the doozles. Let me just say that. Uh, Saquon Barkley, he had a big game against Philly, scored 23 opportunities. So Kyron and Saquon both in your lineups, even though the matchup against the Rams is difficult. Saquon is is terrifying, but, yeah, I mean, when you get the – Saquon could easily have a really bad game here. The Rams have been a brutal matchup on the ground, and we've seen, you know, two weeks ago against the Saints who have a good run defense, sub five fantasy points. Now, Tyrod being there I think is helpful. Um, I, I, I think Saquon is just a, a low end RB one, uh, an average RB two this week. I really like the part of the show where we go through each matchup and the players I have in each matchup <laughs> you're terrified of, don't want to play. Yeah. So that hey, would be we Saquon, Devonte Adams, Amari Cooper. So and, far, so far, so Let's far. Let's keep going. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to Camara. Uh, Matthew Stafford. Yes. Kyron. Yes. Cooper cup. Uh huh. Big time. And, uh, Puka Nakua at nine for one sixty four and one last week. Of course, you play him. Uh, you could have a desperation flex option into Marcus Robinson. It would be desperation to me. That's DFS for me. I, I don't. I don't think I can rely on it for a championship week. I know he's been involved. He's been great four weeks in a row as a top twenty-four guy. But also two receptions, three receptions, four receptions total uh, among that stretch. So I, I don't think he's someone you can rely on. But you're right. He's been good. For a DFS play or something. Demarcus Robinson or Josh Downs? Demarcus Rob Robinson. Robinson. I mean, if you're in like a 14-team league or with three wide receivers, I think Robinson is him. Darius Slayton on the other side or Demarcus Robinson, the third wide receiver for the Rams? I will go mm. Robinson. I think I lean that way as well. I, I, I'm basically just picking Stafford here. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Uh, anybody else you want to talk about in this one? Uh, it just, Tyler yeah, Higby, Darren Waller. Darren Waller has to be discussed. He is he's back on the field. It hasn't been great. Uh, you saw the snaps from forty two percent in his first game against the Saints up to sixty three percent. Six targets first week, five the next, and he was and targeted he by Tyrod. And his Tyrod games have been pretty good. And the matchup um it's, against it's the Rams okay. is okay. At least the last six weeks. You play him over Higby. Over yes. Higby, yeah. Okay. But now like if in that Everett Cole Komet territory, that's a lot tougher. The Cardinals are three and twelve. The Eagles are eleven and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Philly minus eleven, with their highest team implied total of the year at almost thirty points against Arizona. The over under is forty eight and a half. The Eagles are going to uh like a knife through butter destroy the Arizona Cardinals this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will be it will be easy work. There's, I, I would put, like, I don't know if there's a way you can bet whether Jalen Hurts plays in the fourth quarter. 
That's how I feel about this. And, game. and really, and, yeah, and you won't need them. Like if, if now, Mike, they, you if had a different so, opinion. You yeah. thought this game, like you said, you'd take the Cardinals to cover. Uh, yeah, I'll take the points. Not that I again, Cardinals are a terrible team. Just with the the way that the Eagles are playing right now, I've, Eagles I think easily win the game. So I'm not calling an almost upset or anything like that. But I think that they're the Cardinals can, you know, keep up a little bit and handle the eleven. Well, let, let, let's put that to the test for fantasy. Is Kyler Murray a fl uh, a streaming slash emergency option? Like, are you playing Derek Carr? Who was brought up as a streamer? Are you playing Kyler Murray? I would play Kyler. I, I think Kyler is an okay streamer this week. He's my quarterback 11 on the week with the Eagles implied 29 points. There's going to be some garbage time. There's going to be some uh, some rushing yards from Kyler. Um, they're beatable in their secondary. It's a good matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. Kyler's been scary. Kyler has been disappointing, but I do think he is an okay play this week. I would put him just behind the Justin Fields, and I'd put him ahead of Jared Goff. Kyler is one of the most popular questions brought up on the mailbag episode yesterday, people submitting questions about him. Uh, Jalen Hurts, of course, you're going to play him. He's uh, already fifth all-time in rushing touchdowns. <laughs> Thank you, Tush Push. Thank you, DeAndre Swift. Yeah. Uh, Dude, DeAndre Swift, he's the king. He goes down at the one like, like Jalen Hurts pays him to do it, just like – you see this quote from Jason oh, Kelsey? Oh, it's spectacular. Kelsey on a podcast that we, we're not even going to talk about. Uh, he says when, when Swift goes down on the one, he says, I'm so sorry, man. You know exactly what we're about to do. He just tells, <laughs> like, that has, he just tells Swift, I'm so like, sorry. All other running backs, you know, when they break a huge play, they get tackled at the one. They they get up. They're juiced because they know. Time coach, to score. Coach is going to reward me with an opportunity here to punch it in. And the Eagles are like, Thank you for your service, Swift. Uh, can you push? Can you push Jalen Hurts into the end zone for us? <laughs> please, please help us get. That. I mean, the thing is, is like it's a it's a guaranteed touchdown. It's like it, yes. when it's funny yeah, because like, it, okay, Eagles fans love Eagles what you fans. did. Can you just push him in the butt? Push his butt. There's never been a time like when when a player gets tackled before the one. You don't. You you you. You, You're like, darn, they didn't score. Yeah, you get upset. You're like, no, he didn't. When they, when you see an Eagle, as an Eagles fan, I'm not an Eagles fan, but if I was watching as an Eagles fan, when my player gets tackled at the one, I celebrate a touchdown. I go get some concessions. Yes, I, I put my hands up and I say, we scored <laughs> because the next play is a touchdown. It's crazy. Yeah, the uh, the running back in this game, though, DeAndre Swift, I love. I oh, love. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll yep. talk about him. Yeah. Uh, same with James Conner, Mike. Yeah. Are you um, in on Conner? I am. The I'm... Eagles' defense against the run, it bears out in the numbers here. Um, on the year, yeah, they're sixth against the run. Over the last six weeks, 24th in uh, fantasy points allowed to running backs. Conner's been doing it against tough matchups anyway. Yeah, Conner's. They don't got nobody. Connor's... They got nobody else. It's Conner on the field by himself. That Conner is more the reason why I think that the, the score is tighter. Zeke or Connor? Ooh, that's a really good question. If you're in a PPR, I, <sighs> I'm going Zeke either way. Really? Yeah. Uh, I I think PPR. I might just take the the five plus receptions. I know that Zeke. Has will Connor get. outscored Zeke the last three weeks? Um, the last how, three. I don't I'm know. I'm curious how close that. Curious. I've how got close I've got Zeke. If you've Connor. got Connors, uh, this last week Zeke was sixteen and a half. Connor was nineteen point seven. Uh, seven the week prior, Connor was 16.4. And then 23 and a half. 22 and a half. Okay, so, so two of the three. over the three weeks, Connor has been better. Both good options. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hollywood Brown didn't practice. Uh, what's it with the matter. heel injuries everywhere? We got heels. The heels are a problem this year. Heelindex.com. Uh, <laughs> don't start that. No, no, we don't need to register that. Uh, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. AJ Brown hasn't scored since week 12. Uh, I think he's going to score this week. <laughs> you know what? Oh. oh, Touchdown guarantee. Okay. A.J. Well, Brown. Get right. to the books. Got to get a drop. I'm sure that'll that make a big difference on whether you play A.J. Brown, right? Yeah. The fact they made that guarantee. Philly is, they're delightful and easy of every, I mean, everyone starting. Yeah, Goddard too. Yeah, Goddard is in. Then on the other side, James Conner is in. Trey McBride is in. That's the it. end. That's it. The end, yeah. Uh, New Orleans at seven and which, eight, which really is ridiculous. Because 
Well, you like Kyler this Phil week too, but there's no wide else to pick. Exactly. Philly, 30th on the season against fantasy wide receivers. There should be someone here who gets it done. Michael Wilson it's, has had seven targets over the last two weeks. How many has he caught? I believe two? zero. 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 Oh, that's yeah. less if, than two. If I'm playing anyone, I'm, I'm going to – Put the door chain. Remember when I swapped Michael Wilson for Lockett in our Dynasty League? Yeah. Remember when you were like, I don't know if we yeah. should do you this. You didn't want to do that? Oh, I talk, guys, I'm scared. I talked yeah, to you, you into it. you paid me back just like my big, the big Waddle CD <laughs> trade. Yeah, that still upsets me. You guys have no idea. Every time we talk about CD Lamb or every time we talk about Jalen Waddle, I'm mad at you guys. Every time. I should have CD you Lamb on my Dynasty roster. <laughs> They, I mean, I, they, I, I, did, I, did, I turned the trade down. I rejected it. Yeah. We you guys, shamed you. You shamed me yeah, into thinking I was so wrong. You should have stayed strong. Yeah. Roots. That's on you. Okay. Courage, man. Also, CeeDee Lamb is, he's in the, the, the Dynasty final. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> he would have been he was way more for expensive. me as well. Uh, for those not following at home, a long time ago in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away, when Wada was on fire for about four weeks in a row. Uh, we may have persuaded Jason that he was a better well, dynasty play than yeah. CD Lamb, which he still could be. The trajectory of Waddle at that time was full superstardom, and CD Lamb was like he looked like he was just gonna plateau and rest in the like. Oh, he's really good. It's it's been the last year, it's and been those like, things are both true. Yeah, in complete reverse. <laughs> one of now, them is a superstar, yeah, and now. one of them is hey, pretty good. All right, uh, one more matchup here before the starts of the week. The Saints at seven and eight taking on the eight and seven Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay's won four consecutive games. Go Tampa! They are also favored by two and a half. Otherwise, I would have picked them. I, I wasn't sure uh, where this line was going to end up, but I do like Tampa in this one. Over under is forty three. You know there are a lot of fantasy football implications for this game. You know you have Derek Carr, who who Mike you know brought up. On our, yeah, he's the stream, the and, stream of the week, and you yeah. like him more than that. Yeah, it, it's the we will talk about him that starts the week because I'm trying to find it. Just you know, the fringe starter he that, is in, that I'm interested in. He is in my lineup in uh, the I'm in a CBS experts league that we do for uh, St. Jude. Geno Smith, Gardner Minshew, Joe Flacco. No, it's it's Derek Carr. Derek mm -hmm. Carr is starting for me. Like my <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> my, I know. Where I'm, I lost Herbert in that league, and I've been playing randos every week. Where I am, you know, it's dynasty, so I'm forced to go with Goff. I would love to have Derek Carr over Jared Goff this week. And somehow but I'd love to play to against Derek Carr too. That's the conundrum yeah, the of Derek Carr of is that. <laughs> Uh, but Baker's been on fire. He's the, he was the quarterback seven against New Orleans in week four. Would you rather play Carr or Baker if you had those guys? Tampa's at home. It's tough because it Tampa's is. at home. I think home. I'd be playing Tampa's Baker. favored, but the matchup is just so doggone good for passing. The passing game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you just want it. You want pieces. You want um, whoever's playing against them, and you can't really run on them well. So Camara is going to be a big question mark because a lot of times what's said is like, oh, you can't run on them, you could throw on them. Well, thankfully, Alvin Kamara is a pass catcher. But that's really not how it is. It's how they guard the running back position in totality, including the passing game. You know, Aaron Jones wasn't super involved in the passing game uh, in one of those type of matchups. This is one where you do worry about Kamara, like Saquon, um, to have potentially uh, another down game. But the passing, the receivers, the tight ends. It's weird, the, man. I'm looking at the quarterbacks that played against Tampa the last four weeks, and they've all stunk. Give they've me the all list. stunk? Yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. All right. Let me uh, pull this back up here. Uh, Jacksonville, you know, last week. Uh, Jordan Love the week before. Uh, Atlanta the week before that. Carolina the week before that. I mean, you don't have strong quarterbacks. Right. Let's see. Uh, so, Lawrence. Yeah, I mean – Jacksonville is Lawrence got hurt. Where Lawrence was already hurt and then got knocked but, out of the game. I don't think you've had a top ten performance against them in quite a while, despite the fact they give up tons of points to the yeah to the wide receiver. I'm yep. just I'm just observing no, that right now. Like I think it's been a minute. Yeah, it's well, worth talking about. Yeah, it wasn't Desmond Ritter the quarterback two? Was Ritter against Tampa? Yeah. Okay. De Desmond then Ritter was the quarterback two twenty five point four. Okay. Um and that is his one good game. 
Yeah. Um, so I will so say this. That's th- good to know. Even though Tampa has not been passed on by running backs recently. Oh, by running backs, huh? That's but, good. Uh, that's good defense uh, against the running back. Passing uh, two running back on they them recently. They faced Derrick Henry, apparently. Um, they, fair. Uh, the last time that they did get smoked by a running back in the receiving game was 14 targets to Alvin Kamara. Does that give you hope? And well, yeah. I mean, I'm playing Alvin Kamara, and you just expect. I mean, Alvin Kamara had the worst game of of his season last week. Every other game of the entire season has been inside the top like 22 running backs, and most of those have been higher, much much higher. So, you know, I I think that the team made a strategic error in not involving him in the passing game early in that game. They got destroyed because of it, and so you just you just have to put. Alvin Kamara has such a high floor on a regular week that I think you just have to put him in there. Sure. Rashad White, of course. Uh, Mike Evans, of course. Godwin, the targets have been going up, and I think he's going to be a challenge for me to start this week just because the Saints defense, I mean, if you look at their last six weeks, they've given up 13.8 points to opposing wide receivers. If you're favoring Evans, it's hard for me to look at Godwin and he's, say... Baker has been favoring... Chris Godwin lately, though. It's just crazy because Godwin gets all these targets, but like two of those three games where he's had over 10 targets, he ends up wide receiver 37 and 32. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no touchdowns, but six catches for 78 yards yeah. against Jacksonville. And like, you know who's back this week? Marshawn Lattimore. Is he back? Is that, when is that? Uh, a day ago it was reported that Michael what? Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore are expected to return against the Bucs. I, oh, I, we've seen we all just, reports yeah, we, that he is 100% out. We looked like, on Monday. And Lattimore, was, maybe you read it wrong, because Lattimore and Thomas are not expected to return against the Buccaneers, according to the reports I'm reading. That is exactly the word. It's not. Guess who's I not. I that report <laughs> Say exactly guess who's opposite. not back. Can you re- re-say it? Say it again. I like Mike Evans this week because the Evans killer, Marshawn Lattimore, not expected to be back for I mean, the Tampa Bay it's Buccaneers. It's a very important word in the <laughs> it, sentence. It's Jason. three letters, Mike. I got three letters wrong. I mean, it's not that. And there's a bunch of other letters that got right. I got, like, percentage-wise of that <laughs> sentence was, like, 97% correct. I mean, cut, cut me some slack. <laughs> Three letters. Honestly, we thought you were breaking crazy news because yeah. Mike and I were looking at early. Yeah, because it's pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I are facing yes. each other, and I've got Evans, and I was like, but I'm also facing Evans in another league, and I'm like, mm. I don't know if I want Lattimore back or not. No Lattimore. Yeah. No Michael Thomas. You do have Chris Olave, who is limited, but should have a big game. <laughs> Rashid Shahid. The suit is not black. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I I you know what? No Lattimore. There you go. Do 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 do. Um are we Rashid Shahid or Chris Godwin? See, Ooh. I would go Shahid in that situation. Shahid is... There's no way Derek Carr and Shahid don't have breakfast together. Shahid There's is just, the seal. But he's... Dude, he either he either hits or he doesn't. Yeah, and yeah. he... It's far more doesn't. But, but this but is last a week, Last week, 82% of the snaps. That was a season high. Nine targets. Like, I... I wish I knew what was going on. Like, why did... And I mean, I know Olave was hurting... So maybe that's why they played Shahid a little bit more. Uh, if, like if you, if I knew that Shahid was in on seventy plus percent of the snaps, that would be easy. I'll well, take I'll take Shahid. Shahid's superpower is the deep ball, and right now Tampa Bay is allowing the fifth highest rate of twenty plus yard completions in the NFL. So I think I would take Shahid there. I don't think All you're right. going to be happy with Carr this week without Shahid involvement. Yeah, it's going to take a Shahid bomb touchdown to to take him from uh, someone that was okay to like oh. I'm so glad I played Derek Carr this week. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. Welcome into a very big Starts of the Week. Hopefully, we can deliver some names that deliver for you. I am going to do something I don't want to do. Oh. Uh, most important league. I have to face this guy, mm. which tells you that, unfortunately, it's just, I just believe it. Patrick Mahomes against the Cincinnati Bengals. This has been a rough 
roller coaster ride of doom for Patrick Mahomes. I think a lot of you have, have decided to move to someone else potentially. But he's at home. He's against Cincinnati. Uh, he's got a 25.8 team implied total. The Bengals are 25th against quarterbacks over the last six weeks. They average the highest yards per attempt in the NFL. And, um, you know, look, I don't know if teams can get it right this quick. You know, a lot of frustration in that offense. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey throwing his helmet. They haven't figured it out. You Every week you look at a team like that and say, well, they're, they're going to figure it out. I think they're going to figure it out at home. I do. I think they're going to figure it out against Cincinnati. Um, it's just the the opportunity, the defense, the matchup. Um, I'll be shocked if Mahomes doesn't give you at least a couple of touchdowns with major upside potential. Now, I don't know if you guys agree with me. Uh, I hope you don't. I agree with you because of uh, a start of the week you're going to talk about in a minute. I will go with my quarterback start of the week, Brock Purdy. Uh, obviously he just had a four interception turd fest from last week and you can forget about that thing. Put that in a brown bag, light it on fire, put it on a porch step. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Billy let Madison someone else style. step in it. Uh, look, San Francisco, they have the highest team and played point total of the week with 31 points. He's been great all year, had a bad game against a really good Baltimore team. Now he plays a really bad Washington team. 31st in expected points per pass attempt. 32nd in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. The most passing touchdowns allowed. I think you're going to want every single 49er you can. Brock Purdy, I'm not afraid of last week. And I'm going to stick with Derek Carr. Uh, last two weeks, three passing touchdowns Send each game. Send in the car. 7.9 yards per attempt. You know, Rashid Shahid last week certainly helped out, and the matchup is absolutely there. So, like, if you are struggling, and I will give a shout out to Nick Mullins, who may or may not be this the the starting quarterback for the Vikings. Uh, if you missed, if you were off of uh, Twitter yesterday, you missed some spectacular uh, Jair Alexander <laughs> drama. That was just ridiculous. But the outcome is he has he will be suspended this week. So Mullins is also in play as a streamer. Should he be the starter? but there's the chance that he gets benched. So I'm going with Derek Carr. Must win game for the Saints. He's produced the last two weeks. My running back start of the week is Chuba Hubbard against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been a top 24 running back five consecutive weeks, 22 opportunities per game for Chuba Hubbard. Uh, he is entering the budget star category at this point in time. The volume has been insane. Jacksonville's run defense has been bad recently, 29th. Uh, over the last six weeks and schedule adjusted for running backs. And they give up a ton of receiving work to opposing running backs, including six receptions to Singletary and Mixon and Rashad White last week. Jerome Ford even had five receptions. Chuba's involvement is too significant to ignore. He's my start of the week. And he's looked good. Like, yes. He's actually impressed me with some of his runs, which he has not done most of his career. Um, I'm going to go with DeAndre Swift against Arizona. Love it. Should be an absolute full stop. Yeah, full, full. Yeah, against Arizona. Next, but last week, twenty carries is second most opportunities of the season. The Eagles have their highest team implied point total of the year, and when you full stop at Arizona, it's because they rank thirty second in rushing yards allowed. They are on pace to face the fourth most rushing attempts over the last decade because people just want to do it. Just, I want to like, run against them. They're like, hey, dude, you see how easy that was? Hey, call that play again. Just hand the ball off. We're up by two scores, and uh, DeAndre Swift. Yeah, Khalil Herbert last week just went crazy. Uh, I'm a, I'm going to call a DeAndre Swift touchdown guarantee. Oh, all right. Same game now as Now he yours. won't go down at the one? No, I think that the Cardinals won't be able to unlock that power of his. Okay. James Conner against Philadelphia. He is on a heater. He is on fire, running back 5'11", 5, 5. Oh, That's a player I have you're talking good things about. There, the opportunities have been there. We're, we're talking 33% of the rushing attempts and targets in that span. That is elite workhorse usage. So I think he'll see the volume. Plus the matchup, Eagles, you know, over the last you know few weeks since week 12, 24th in schedule adjusted points. James Cook, Pollard, Ken Walker, Saquon, all like running backs are producing right now. And Arizona's 
offense has to run through James Conner, and it has been running through James Conner. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here with my wide receiver start of the week because it has not been consistent. Oh, dude, I like it. Brandon Cooks against the Detroit yeah. Lions in that Saturday night, fifty three point over under game, the highest of the week. Cooks, he's been a little bit quiet lately because the offense, Dak, you know that the six games run that you know the six game run they were on, it slowed up a little bit. No one can be that hot forever. No, but I need him that hot this week. Yeah, and uh, back. Detroit. The secondary is so vulnerable. You don't run on them. Pollard can't run anyways. 28th in yards per attempt. 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. Brandon Cooks. If you had Cooper tonight and you had Brandon Cooks on your on your bench, you, you – Yeah, I'd, play, I'd have to say I'm going to play Brandon Cooks. Yeah. Okay. Um, my wide receiver start of the week. That's on tape, what I just that said. That is. Yeah. Right. Christian Olave. Chris Olave last week. He gutted it out on Thursday night football, playing through an ankle injury, so you're going to have him limited this week, I'm sure, at practice. I'm not going to worry about that. He gets extra time from that game because it was a Thursday night game to rest. He was the wide receiver 12 last week. Um, he, this is a must-win game against Tampa Bay. We just covered it about how you can throw on Tampa Bay. They're 29th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. And just look at the big games that they've given up to good wide receivers. Brandon Ayuk just had 156 yards against the Pity City, 107 yards. Drake London's monster 172-yard game, it was against Tampa Bay. Dontavian Wicks had 97 yards. Calvin Ridley last week, 6 for 90 and 2. So, Chris Olave, let's win some people some championships. Chris, do it. And a fringe, wide, it. fringe wide receiver starter at this point who I would put in is De – sorry, oh, Andy. Oh, man. It's DeAndre Hopkins. You want some narrative street? It's the real revenge game for DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, as a couple weeks ago, he played. It did not work out for the Houston – or uh, I'm sorry. did not work out for Hopkins against the Houston Texans in that, uh, in that game because you would see two for 21, nine targets. That's the important thing. It's just that was a really strange game for the Tennessee Titans. That was, I think, the worst game of Derrick Henry's career. Everything went wrong for them, and then they they uh, you know had a more of a bounce back the next week. I'm uh, not doing. Are you doing that with Tannehill? I I think I'm still willing to play him as a wide receiver three. Uh, if even if it is Ryan Tannehill with Levis, the target share has been fantastic. But over the last six weeks, including that game uh, against the Texans or against the Titans, where they were shut down. Texans 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the wide receiver. Like Houston has flipped where last year it was all run funnel. And that's why we were so excited at the beginning of the year looking at Derrick Henry's uh, playoff schedule. But that's upside down now. It's quarterbacks and wide receivers who are getting it done. And Hopkins, I think, is he's still in play as, as a flex or a wide receiver three. Would you play Amari Cooper or DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, that one... I'd probably still go Cooper. Travis Kelsey's my start of the week at tight end. <laughs> Who would have ever imagined yeah. that that could be a sentence allowed in this segment? But <laughs> you just read it, Jason. Ninth in points per game over the last six weeks. Travis freaking Kelsey gets to play Cincinnati. I mean, that is what it is. Cincinnati has been one of the burst. Uh, the burst. It's been one of the worst defense against tight ends on the year. Travis Kelsey. Patrick Mahomes, I think they get right. I think you end up not regretting the fact that they're on your roster. Uh, of course, if, if you're in the title game, you overcame them at this point. But I think Travis Kelsey this week gets it done. All right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, the reason I think that the Chiefs unlock their offense is because Kelsey slowed down a bit, and he hasn't been able to dominate other teams. But when a, a good matchup like this comes along, I think he will. So good start of the week. Sorry, you have to play him. Uh, uh, Mike has to play him too. Oh, yeah. All right, you yeah. got him, and you're against him. So my start of the week this week: T. McBee, baby, Trey yeah. McBride. Uh, I'm not playing him as a tight end. I mean, he'll be in my tight end slot, but he's the wide receiver one for the Arizona Cardinals. We talk about oh, who can you play Hollywood? Will he be active? Will you be able to play the Dorch or you know Elijah Moore? You can throw on the Eagles. Well, they're going to with Trey McBride. I know last week he just dudded. Six for 31, obviously in a PPR league. Six is pretty good for a tight end to get. I expect a lot more this season. He is this team's wide receiver one. He leads the team in targets per route run at 
in yards per route run at 2.14 and expected fantasy points per route run. And the Eagles are super bad against wide receivers. They're bad against tight ends, 25th. They're 32nd against wide receivers. This is their main passing option. You have to throw against Philly, 39 passing attempts a game. Um, just like the Cardinals are on pace for a top five rushing attempts against them, the Eagles are on pace for a top five passing attempts against them. So Eagles are going to run, Cardinals are going to throw, play Trey McBride. And this is for uh, our people out there who lost TJ Hawkinson. Maybe Cole Komet doesn't go for you and you're really scraping at the waiver wire. Juwan Johnson, the, the matchup is there since week eight. Tampa Bay dead last in schedule adjusted points to the tight end position. Kincaid, Schultz, Kittle, Kyle Pitts, Tucker Kraft, guys that have gotten it done against Tampa Bay, all with touchdowns. And then last week, Evan Ingram didn't score, but 10 for 95. And Juwan Johnson, at least the last two weeks, rounding back into the form of – uh, the player that we had hoped we were going to see for the entire season. And that's the, the targets per route run have been at 20%. That's great. Tight end nine and tight end four. And this is chasing a touchdown. Like I think Gerald Everett is also a, uh, a solid play. Should everybody be out for the chargers, but the touchdown upside, I'm going to go to Juwan Johnson. This is I, his success last year. It was, it was touchdowns and of the guys on the waiver wire with matchup, with quarterback and everything combined, I think Jawan Johnson is your best desperation play. All right, those are our starts for championship week. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on the Boom Boom Kicker, I Merry Christmas to the Naughties with a lump of poo. <coughs> At year's end, I need a long nap to take a full Boom Boom victory lap and retire from these kicking suckers. So I waddled into their kicking HQ and clogged all their toilets with doo-doo. Sayonara to the Ravens' Justin Tucker. I'm done. I'm That's out. That's it. That's the retirement. <laughs> That's it. That's what I thought. No more stupid boom-boom. All right, the boom-boom. It's gone. The boom-boom turned into the poo-poo. Yeah. We'll yeah. find There's you. a lot of doo-doo. We'll find you a segment you don't want to do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Be careful. Besides, careful what you wish oh, for. Oh, no. <laughs> so you're not even boom booming for week 18? Or is that the, like, uh, what do they call it? The epilogue? You know, do an <laughs> epilogue boom boom? Uh, TBD. Stay tuned. I just, I'm in our I'm in our show doc right now and uh, got to the segment where boom boom kicker is. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the show doc. I have to scroll through so many weeks <laughs> and pictures of this boom boom story. <laughs> is Kyle on the microphone here? I'm here. Kyle, how do you feel about this retirement? And, and to retire with Justin Tucker. That's yeah, the way I'm to do it. I'm just glad. I want to retire with Jason. We're out. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you guys are finished? All right. Uh, tomorrow, more matchups. The fantasy face-off. I managed to lose for a third straight week trying to, uh, you know, I, it was great. It was great Get when Mike turkey. had lost three in a row. They always like, ah, you suck. And then, um, well, I've been humbled. I've been humbled. So, uh, Mike, you got out of it by just going full DGAF. That's right. So, we'll <laughs> oh, see. No. Hey. We'll hey, see what brother. happens. YOLO. Yeah. It's the only yeah. way to go. The season's almost over, isn't it? Uh, thank you for supporting the show. We appreciate all your reviews over on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, wherever you're listening. Uh, that's an easy way for you guys to support us, and we do read those. We appreciate it. Good luck as you head into Thursday night. I'm talking also to myself. <laughs> I uh, hope I make the right decision. I hope you do as well. And uh, that's what this show is all about. We want to equip you with as much information as possible. Every league is different. Every roster is different. Every scoring system is different. But we want to equip you with the most information you you can have to make the best decision you can make to give yourself the highest odds in this game called fantasy football. 
That is it for today's show. We'll catch you tomorrow. You can watch us if you want. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.